What's up everybody, Jake your resident content cowboy. Down here, we're taking a look at Maridon, and now that we've seen the gameplay and we've kind of reacted to it, I wanna go through every single move this Pokemon has and everything we know so we can have a better idea of what we're actually seeing here. Cause seeing it for the first time, I was confused about maybe how it's passive worked or exactly how to charge its moves. So we're gonna go through this Pokemon with all of its moves in this video. I hope you enjoy it, yeehaw. So taking a look at Maridon here, one of the first things that I was confused by was Maridon's passive. I didn't understand how it worked. It's that gauge that is charging up near Maridon. You can see it right now, like pulsing with electricity. Its passive is called Hadron Engine. So when this Pokemon hits an enemy Pokemon with an ability, with a move, it creates electric terrain for 10 seconds. They can then consume a portion of the Aos energy. So just like Zacian and actually now Mewtwo with some of its nerfs, uh, it can consume some Aos energy and it can expand the area of electric terrain. If the Pokemon with that ability or your allies are within there, you, Maridon, will deal 30% additional damage and 10% additional damage from your allies. So not only is it this field that's going to do something to goal zones, which I'll talk about in one sec, you're also going to do more damage inside of this field. The electric terrain strengthens ally goal zones, that strengthens the healing by 30%, and weakens enemy goal zone healing by 30%. It goes on cooldown uh, for 20 seconds after it's triggered. So that's that big shield, uh, excuse me, that big field of energy that you're seeing there on Maridon. It's gonna be really good for heading into a lane and trying to win a fight on an enemy goal zone for sure. You're also seeing its basic attack. Uh, nothing really special to report there. It's a basic attack, it deals damage, it doesn't have anything super specific happening with it at all. Your first two moves are pretty basic. You have Thundershock, which sends out a jolt of electricity in a designated direction, however you want to shoot it, dealing damage to enemy Pokemon, pretty basic. And then your other move is Thunder Wave. You discharge electricity at a designated Pokemon, you deal damage to them, you decrease movement speed by 30% and attack speed by 10%. So those are your two early moves. And then from there, you have a few insanely cool options to choose from. You have Charge Beam and Electro Drift as your first move choice. And in this video, first we're gonna take a look at Charge Beam. So Charge Beam, living true to its name right there, you charge power before firing your beam. If it hits opposing Pokemon, the user's special attack is increased by 10% for one second. This can happen a maximum of two times. So it's giving you a buff if you hit with it. The user stores electric power. If the user stores electric power twice within six seconds and this is that combo that you're seeing on Maridon's moves it can use a boosted version of charge beam the boosted version has the user continuously fire an electric beam in the designated direction dealing damage to opposing pokemon in the area of effect a maximum of two uses can be kept in reserve for this move and i have to assume i haven't seen it but i have to assume that hitting with two uses of this move uh, once you're in the upgraded charge beam, that is when your special attack is going to increase even more because you're hitting multiple times with it. We can see right here, they're hitting multiple times with their charge beam. There is once, here is the second hit right here. Now charge beam is charged up and you can see they release that continuous stream of special attack damage at your opponents, which is very cool. It's, you know, very much a long range mage ability for this character. The plus version of Charge Beam is gonna give you another in reserve. So just gonna make it easier to set up that, you know, super powered Charge Beam onto your opponents. Let's talk about uh, your next move here, your second move choice that we see in this video, which is Thunder, which I mean, I can't wait. Thunder, you summon a cloud from the skies above that drops wicked thunderbolts. This was written by someone from Boston. The summoned cloud moves slowly towards the nearest opposing Pokemon, dropping thunderbolts wherever a set amount of, whenever a set amount of time passes, excuse me. The thunderbolts deal damage and decrease move speed. So it's like a fire spin from Delphox, but it's not disrupting as much. However, it's tracking and it's doing really nice damage. Thunder is incredibly mean. And then the upgrade increases uh, uh, enemy move speed by 50%. Right now it's a 30% move speed decrease, which is huge, but the plus version of this is a 50% move speed decrease. This seems to be set up as, again, the long range you're playing uh, Maridon kind of as like a mage, very similar to, you know, Chandelure or something like that, Gardevoir. This feels like that build for Maridon. 
So instead of Charge Beam, you could pick up Electro Drift, which I'm most excited about. So in this, you're actually, you get a movement uh, ability. You race forward in the designated direction while spinning, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. The user also stores electric power. If you store electric power twice within five seconds, it can be used for a boosted version. So both of your moves, Charge Beam and Electro Drift, have this boosted version for them. The boosted version has the user do a spinning attack aimed at designated opposing Pokemon, dealing damage to any Pokemon it hits. It deals increased damage if their HP is low, so it's an execute move. And a maximum of two uses can be kept in reserve for this move. The uh, plus version of this decreases the time it takes to store this move. So it's not an extra stored version of it, but it does decrease the time it takes to store it. So we can see here Electro Drift being used. You dash through one time, they're gonna dash through once more. And then once you do that, you have the charged up version of it. And you can see the range on it is actually super long. This is what I'm most excited for because this feels like you're kind of giving Maridon almost the speedster treatment here. Uh, and I'm really excited to just kind of see how this will per uh, perform inside the game because the range on it is absolutely massive. And I just, yeah. I think it's really cool that this Pokemon seems to have two very distinct play styles. Your next move option is Parabolic Charge, and Parabolic Charge actually feels like it could work with either Charge Beam or Electro Drift. I guess you could go either way. Ooh, we're seeing that beautiful Unite move right there. We'll talk about that here in a minute. But what this does is it floods the area around you with electricity. It deals damage to your opponents. It decreases move speed. Once again, a big move speed decrease by 50% for two seconds. If it hits an opposing Pokemon, you recover HP and a stored use of Charge Beam and Electro Drift. Most likely, you're going to use this when you're dashing in to your opponents and then you're charging up another Electro Drift so you can either continue fighting or you can try to get out of this situation. The more opposing Pokemon it hits, the more HP it recovers. It heals 4% max HP. So this is kind of, it feels a little like a combo combination of Zeraora's Discharge and then something that's giving you extra charges of a dash move, which is really, really cool. Maybe it's like Zeraora's Discharge and almost Razor Leaf in a way when you're hitting it out on the outside of that rim, but you're not going to need to hit it out there. So it's pretty cool. The upgrade version grants you a shield when it's used and the shield seems pretty massive. So finally, let's talk about this Unite move. Bright Future Meteor Storm. You call down five meteorites in a row, dealing damage to opposing Pokemon. If it hits a Pokemon, the next meteorite that falls deals 20% increased damage. So if you land all of these meteorites, it continues to stack all of that damage, which is something I had, of course, no idea about just seeing this footage. The final meteorite deals higher damage in a wider area effect and throws opponents. Throw is Pokemon Unite's way of saying it knocks them up which oh this unite move is just unbelievably cool and it doesn't feel as cheesy as something like Mewtwo's even though it feels super super powerful so I wanted to go through everything Maridon right there because I think from just watching the gameplay footage it seems very cool but I wanted to have more of an in-depth kind of look at exactly what's going on with this Pokemon let me know what you think in the comments did you enjoy this would you like a more in-depth look at you know all the new Pokemon that are coming to the game Thank you all for watching. Thank you for listening. I love you. Maridon coming soon. Pokemon Day, February 27th is when this Pokemon should drop. All right, everybody. Goodbye. Shoutouts to Eevee. We did it.